Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how I resin my rocks. You can use this method with any type of resin, but I do use the pour over method, so if you don't like the drips on the back, then this video might not be for you. So let's get started. In this tutorial I'm using KS resin. This resin works really well with rocks. You need two clear cups. You need two popsicle sticks. I know I'm only showing one, but you need two. You need a lighter. I'm using a torch. And this is my little resin doohickey. I use that to scrape out little fibers and whatnot. You need your gloves. I also recommend wearing a mask. And these are just my stands to put my rocks on for pouring the resin over. These rocks already have one coat of resin, but if you look at the one on the left, I had a little bubble mishap on it, so I'm going over that one, and then the one on the right just didn't get coated all the way properly. Now using your two cups, you'll see on the bottom, there are two little indent lines. I'm measuring up to the first one on both of my cups using both the bottles of uh, resin. Now in the first one, I'm using the resin, which is part A. You want to measure these accurately because if you're off, you're going to get stickiness and whatnot and you'll need to sand or recoat. So I'm sorry I'm in the way, but I'm measuring up to that first line with the first cup, part A. It can be tricky measuring it. Um, I would definitely look at it eye level, setting them both close together to make sure you get the proper measurement. So once you pour it in and get it at the level you need it, I would definitely recommend putting your cap on it directly after because if you mix up the caps then they get stuck and that is not good. So for the second cup I'm using part B which is the hardener. Now I'm measuring it at the same exact line, so they're both equal. And here I am again in the way. I'm sorry for that, guys. So now that that is over, you're going to want to combine the parts. So mix part A with part B or B with part A, whichever, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to take part A and mix it with part B, scraping the sides gently so I'm not uh, getting too many bubbles in there. So as you can see, I'm going to scrape the side with the side of my popsicle stick and that is why we're going to replace that popsicle stick when mixing these two mixtures, just so uh, when I'm putting it onto my rock, I'm not getting uh, part A that was on the popsicle stick and potentially messing up the surface of the resin. Now with a new popsicle stick, you're going to want to scrape the excess of part A off that popsicle stick and discard the old one. And that is the popsicle stick we're going to be using to mix it. Uh, you're not going to want to mix this too rough and too vigorously. You're going to want to do it gently because micro bubbles are a pain in the butt, especially when they're stuck deep in the resin on the surface. So I would recommend mixing this for about two to three minutes. Um, I usually put the palm of my hand underneath it to warm it up as I go, but this does heat up by itself. Mm -hmm. 
When you're done mixing, you're going to want to take your popsicle stick and your resin mixture and gently pour it over each one. Make sure you leave some for the second rock. I've made that mistake plenty of times. But just pour about an even amount on each one. With your popsicle stick, gently smear the resin around on the surface. Don't worry about the edges right now. Just make sure you get an even coat on, along the top of each rock. Set your resin aside and using your finger, you're gonna to wanna to smear the rest of the resin along the edges of each rock. It doesn't have to be perfect because this will run um, evenly coating it and it's self-leveling so you don't have to worry about any indents or anything. Now that the rocks are coated, we're going to go in with a torch, and this is my favorite part. Uh, I'm using a torch from Dollar General. It was about $6, and I prefer this to a standard lighter because those can um, accumulate soot on the top of it, which can transfer to the surface of the Santorini or stone, whichever you're working with, and that is not pretty. So I just do this for about two minutes, uh, giving breaks in between to let other bubbles rise. This part is my favorite because I find it very therapeutic. Uh, it's just something about watching the bubbles come to the surface and disappear is very calming to me. Next, I'm going to be going in with my little resin doohickey thing I showed you in the beginning. This is just an old paintbrush that has dried up resin on it. 
I use this to scoop out or uh, get rid of any little dust particles that are sitting on the surface. Finally, I'm going back in with my last torch, going over each one to get rid of every last bubble. Now that you're finished, this is what they should look like. Uh, you might need another coat. Me, myself, personally need at least two, sometimes more. Welcome to my quarantine zone. Uh, this is an old creative options storage box for crafts. I just took out the little shelf boxes that were in there. During the curing time for your rocks, it is really important to have an area to seclude them from dust particles, hair, all that nonsense that tends to get stuck to them. So that is why I found this box and thought it was perfect. The doors open vertically and I just wipe down the area of containment with a microfiber cloth to get rid of any dust that may be clinging onto it. I let my rocks sit in quarantine for 24 hours. Um, they can be dry to the touch sooner than that, but if they are, just take them out or leave them there for a full 72. It is important to let them sit and fully cure for 72 hours. Um, if you don't, you could get scratches and indents in the surface. Once the 72 hours is over, I palm sand the bottom of each rock. And that's it. I hope this video helped you and thanks for watching.